Hello everybody, I'm Grandmaster Jan Gustafsson. Welcome to the fourth episode of the Chicken Chess Club podcast, where I am once again joined by my dear, dear, dear friends, Grandmasters Peter Heine Nielsen and Laurent Fressinet to talk about the chess world and everything else that is happening in Peter's life in particular. Peter, how do you feel today? Today I feel great, but uh, again, it was a tough week with uh, kids being ill and such. But uh, no, today uh, my oldest son is in school and then the weekend we went to a very nice uh, spa location for one night. We're uh, sort of in the in Anikche in a sort of nice Lithuanian uh, pine forest with amazing air. And uh, today I have started with uh, a tweet, tweet about feeder and a round of golf. So I would say life is improving, but it's really, really been up and down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Laurent, how, how are things with you? Done with your stressful yeah, vacation? Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, I came back home, so my microphone is uh, much better. But that's the only good news. <laughs> I'm back to Paris while uh, I had a great time uh, there uh, in the south of France. It was uh, very nice. Very enjoyable time. So, okay, now we are back, back to, to, to work. Uh, let's say so how is life in hamburg is it sunny <laughs> it's sunny i think like i don't go outside but uh, there seems to be sunshine good weather so what i do is i lie on the couch depressed and watch some very depressing movies while thinking Ugh, i'm so busy i have to work and yeah living the life the usual the usual state of things i think uh, the question of Peter was very friendly and nice, which was a bit uh, uh, surprising. But I think his, his, his real question was, are, are you going to show uh, our prep for the match uh, to, to the German team? <laughs> I think that was <laughs> the point of interest from, uh, from Peter. <laughs> I don't want to go into too much detail there. But Peter, if we think about long and hard, what secrets could I give away? I, I don't know, point? but uh, <laughs> I remember I was German team captain uh, quite some years back. You were on the team and uh, you got me the gig and I'm still angry about that because it was basically two horrible... Uh, <laughs> what a great time. Yeah, well, horrible weeks for me, but also, well... Well, I had specifically said before I couldn't really give away my Anand prep, but there was definite pressure to, to do it. And I think... Uh, at some point, uh, I was under so much pressure from Nidic that uh, I actually gave him some prep. And, uh, well, he thought it was so bad that he thought that I was hiding the real prep and such. And then, well, you get into the situation, you are giving away real prep, but uh, you're not getting any credit for it because he thinks it's too crappy. And uh, you end up in a pretty bad uh, circle there, I would say. But uh, to talk more about you, which kind of powers do you have? I mean, is it just you who takes out the round uh, or do you actually have to consult with the players and such? Now, first of all, I'll take your your route then. I will not give away any, any prep unless Bluebaum or Svane put too much pressure on me <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I break yeah. into, into heading outside. <laughs> um, so, we were, where were we? We were at lunch, right? So no, 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 but you he asked like, <laughs> how, how much power? Yeah, you just decide for everything, yeah, basically. The board order, who is playing the next day, like uh, just a uh, normal coach, yeah. If that's your definition of everything, then yes, I think these are exactly the things I get to decide <laughs> the board order and who is playing the next day. But let me just go through the thing really quickly. So you have lunch, the players show up or they don't. Then the game start, I assume, at three. That's the tricky part as a team captain, because frankly, you don't really want to be there and sit there for five, six hours because you're usually trapped in the playing area. Obviously, you can't really talk to anybody. You don't have your phone. You can't do any work. And the, the impact you have, other than being there, bringing some coffee and showing some moral assistance, is very, very limited. Like once in a while, there, there might be a draw for or whatever, but basically the players decide these things themselves. So this, these are dead hours and you have to, I think now the rules are, although I'm not sure that the team captain can show up two hours late and sometimes you also have some arrangement that the last player that finishes um, signs the score sheet. So it always seems strange because from the outside it's probably the most important part of the job to sit there next to the players while they're playing while in reality it's really the least important and you would rather use that time to sleep or do some work because then yeah, once the games are over of course you 
you go for dinner either individually or together with the team depending how long everybody plays then you have a team meeting i think around whatever 9 30 p.m you get the the board pair no the the team pairings for the next day so usually you wait for those you have the team meeting in my experience from the good old days it doesn't make too much sense to have two hours team meetings where everybody's sick and everybody had more <laughs> extra blacks so you have a nice little tiresome discussion till <laughs> till um, yeah, the middle of the night so usually i would try in my unlimited powers as team captain to keep those short and within five minutes have the decision or announce the decision who doesn't play the next day ideally you check with the players yeah before of course who's who feels how and so on but i really dislike it when these official meetings are being dragged out for very long because it also stops players from resting and preparing so you have that you're hopefully done quickly and then you check individually who needs help overnight with what openings depending how awake you are you work at night and rinse and repeat so that's usually how these things go as team captain and as i said especially in order to work more at night it of course helps if you can sort of rest during the games or part of during the games peter any transparency questions no, about you, my, my powers my authority I mean, you make it sounds like you, it's an incredibly tough job <laughs> and you're sort of taking one for the team by not playing but actually doing the, the co uh, coaching job instead but well i'm a coach no i <laughs> I love being at Olympiads. Yeah. I mean, I, I really like having a reason to go there. And if it's without playing, it's even better. Mm -hmm. But it is work. Like, uh, you did you did the gig in 2012. I'm not going to do it again. No, I understand. No, it's interesting. I actually, I think you missed one point that uh, you also have to give in the lineup before the deadline. And uh, while that might sound trivial... Uh, hi hi Till midnight, right? That. <laughs> no, I think that... <laughs> I don't know what it is actually, but uh, I've heard well, about it's either early in the morning yeah, I think or it's early usually morning, I would yeah. do it. It's been been team yeah. team missing that and uh, such. That's actually more important than one would think. Uh, anyway, it shouldn't become a Bundes trainer extra episode, I guess, right? So or no, it's it's, it's no? nice. It's nice. For, it's okay. faster. I know, but you you used to be the the Dutch uh, captain, yeah, for some years. I remember you in the last Olympiad actually, Jan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one Olympiad and one European team. It almost sounds like in football, right? That, you know, the German guy, he goes and gets some experience in a smaller country, but then he comes back and becomes Bundes trainer, right? And to have, bring back the title. Uh, but uh, Has that happened with Yogi Löw? I, I am not sure, to be, to be honest. How, uh, but, uh, how good your analogy is. But why why, why did you stop with the Dutch guys? I mean, we, we, we know, we know, we want to, you know the answer we want to hear. No, honestly, I think that it's because of my great loyalty to you guys. No, no geary controversy or anything, but I didn't do the, what was it? The European mm -hmm. Team Championship, which was shortly before the World Championship match, because I had the tough assignment to go to Thailand with <laughs> Laurent. We had to test the location, Just you know, make sure the hotel was okay, <laughs> that Mr. Laurent had a big enough suite. <laughs> And the the European Team Championship would would end. I don't know exactly, like three days, yeah, four days I before think, the match. I think Jordan was playing uh, the European teams. For sure, maybe uh, Daniel as well. Of course, they were. Playing, and it basically, uh, yeah. in effect, meant that they would arrive uh, barely in time to do sort of work for the first game. It was not a disaster in the sense we had prepared uh, yeah. both possible first games uh, very well in advance, but it was tight, and especially for. The guys who are not uh, exceptionally young, I thought it was a reasonable thing that you you skipped the European, and I understand that in that sense we maybe p I mean pushed you away from a Dutch captain. So I'm actually happy. happy. No, 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 I don't want. I'm wanna. actually happy <laughs> to see you get this uh, job. I don't get that uh, wrong. <laughs> sure. No, no, I don't. I don't want to put it on that, but I think. Well. My boy Smates stepped in uh -huh. and did a stellar job, and they might have realized that he's a much nicer person and much better theoretician than me. So no real reason to get back. But of course, I checked with my with my Dutch guys before oh, talking really? to the Germans. So yeah, yeah, of course. So I may, I, I may, I I'm, I'm probably will go there as well uh, to Chennai. Uh, how about you? I cannot say much because uh, people who. Wow. Ask me not to say too much for the moment, but uh, how about you? But you, you, you. Okay, so not as a player. And what else could it be? Are you French team captain? 
Did you, no, no, did you text I, 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 cannot, I cannot say too much. <laughs> okay, yeah. you can't say. All right. Um, but... Uh, what do you think, Peter? French female? <laughs> no, no. Uh, no. But how I about you, nothing. Peter? Are, are you going to Chennai? <laughs> hang, on, hang on, For some, yeah, I would guess that he is captain for some, I don't know, weaker team. But uh, wh- why can't be a player actually? I don't know. Well, that's fr- then you wouldn't be so secretive about it. I don't know. Maybe they didn't announce the selection, so I cannot. Uh, so quite some French players are not playing then, or that you can't reveal. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Anyway, well, about uh, if I'm going, I honestly don't know when it is. So uh, See, you, it gives, gives away my plan. I have absolutely no offers, or neither as a player nor as a coach. So I, I really don't think so. Starts late July. Oh really? Okay. Mm-hmm. No, no, I, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't think so. And um, I think my my wife is not running, so I think uh, no election things either and such. So nobody asks you to be to represent their country. Or? No, no, it's pity. Yeah, sad subject. Chicken chess club uh, listeners, Peter, Peter needs a cake. No, no, I r- actually I don't have time for it. So I really, it's the, it's the <laughs> holiday seasons for me and such. And, uh, Peter wants to be asked and then say no because <laughs> golf season is still That running. is always nice. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, they stopped asking me a while back. All right, shall we move on to weekly chess business? What is happening? The Grand Chess Tour is ongoing. Mm-hmm. I noticed all the candidates aren't doing great. No, Ali Reza isn't doing great. No, Great, Fabi's where at 50%, Rapport is at minus one. I oh, know, Fabi's at minus one as well. Nepo is at yeah, 50% ne- at the time of recording. Yeah, Nepo beat uh, Ariesa in a very interesting game, very sharp uh, opening, where uh, Ariesa tried to, to avoid the, the Petrov uh, by playing two uh, bishops c4. Well, he did avoid the Petrov, but uh, <laughs> that was not. Yeah, that was a very sharp game. I don't know. It was difficult to, to see what's going on. And uh, yesterday, at the time we were recording, uh, uh, Nepo lost this um, Catalan. Uh, he played against uh, Magnus. Uh, the very, I mean, the very same line, but uh, was said he decided to, 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 to play the, the safe option. Should that make us feel stupid if someone just plays the computer mainline and is a pawn up and then wins the <laughs> game? Easily, technically, like, do we think? Eh, maybe that was. Maybe option. I'll try and explain <laughs> it better than Laurent. That uh, well, they were playing the the main line Catalan, where Magnus played Queen C2, which is the main line, and uh, Japan actually played this uh, very topical move B5, which. Uh, and in the match, Magnus played a very sharp move, knight e5, which was uh, obviously a surprise for Nepom and a very very double edged uh, pawn sacrifice. But uh, the critical move is probably his a4, which was played by Wesley So yesterday. And uh, if white wants, it leads by force to a 5 versus 4 uh, queen and bishop versus queen and bishop uh, ending. And, uh, well, obviously it looks pleasant to white to play. It's just a free, free roll with an pa- extra pawn. But the computer says it's basically a dead draw. And, um, well, I guess obviously Nepom has analyzed it before, most likely with Leko, and we have looked at it as well. And I think both teams decided, uh, probably influenced by computers, that, well, it's just a waste of a white playing an ending like this. But uh, Wesley So won it uh, quite easily. And, uh, no, it's a relevant question. Uh, are we just misjudging it because we're staring at the computer? Or did uh, Nepom just defend horribly? Uh, interesting to hear what you think about that. I think, first of all, I don't want to get too much into details, but I'm not sure it leads by force to this. Five versus four opposite color bishop things like there are options for black along the way, but in general the notion is always in these very direct computer main lines where you can more or less click your way home that it feels like a waste of time, and then often it happens afterwards that you sort of trust the opponent's team. Okay, if they go there, they will have to clean this up. We can also make a draw with the computers, and then often it happens afterwards that someone just plays it. Yeah. And it doesn't look as easy. And you feel a little dumb. I th- still think in the moment it's the it's the correct decision. And it would have mo- most likely been a waste of time. Also, some months have passed. Maybe you didn't expect that line wasn't that much into details down the stretch there. But you, I think, always with chess prep, you have these moments where you think, nah, this line is too obvious or too naive. And then someone does it. And uh, sometimes it goes well. So, no, I don't think... 
it was wrong in the moment. But of course, what we did, or what Magnus did in game two, was extremely double-edged, you could argue, if it would have made sense to play something safer like that, some sort of free roll. But that's all hindsight. Like, yeah, I was a bit uh, surprised when I saw it was a bad sign for Nepo. Uh, I saw him before taking on F3 and getting to this opposite color uh, bishop ending. It took 30 minutes. So which meant like uh, he didn't remember exactly what he had to do if he, if he should keep, if, if he should play with bishop against knight or if he should play this opposite color. move bishop before that he thought about forever. I don't think that's what the comp wanted. Yeah, but uh, overall, I mean, he didn't know. Uh, that was weird to me that he didn't know which uh, pieces to exchange, basically. That he was thinking very long for uh, which um, which setup uh, he should get as black. And that was a very bad sign. So maybe he was not into details, because I think it was probably clarified uh, before the match, because this is... Uh, stuff which seems quite uh, uh, manageable to, to clarify but uh, I don't know so with game from uh, from from Nepo and not not super impressive even if probably the main reason that he didn't check the line for for quite a while and he didn't remember the, the details there's so many so many lines to check but of course uh, Wesley won a game uh, 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 yeah, games. yeah, he, got, he won a game at the start and now he won another game. I mean, like for Wesley, it was perfect. I mean, just this pawn up. Uh, I mean, now he will play even more uh, tight, I guess, but <laughs> I'll try another one like that and uh, see what happens. It's very comfortable for black, of, for, for white, of course. Yeah, no, it, it, it surprises me because well, we didn't go there, and uh, it looked too easy. But uh, but when you see a game like that, you're just playing for two results and and uh, tremendous amount of suffering in, in in a way and such. No, it's a typical thing. I don't have a very strong opinion. I was mainly curious uh, a, a, about these uh, things as well. Well, it's a extremely different approach. We saw Ali Reza against Nepom. He played uh, this very double edged positions with. Uh, yeah, well, also entailed huge risk, and most likely we also there saw some world championship prep for 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 Nepom. And uh, well, they played for free results. Uh, Nepom won, and so did it uh, his way. We we can call it uh, chickenish, but it was very very efficient with absolutely no no downside uh, except for making a the risk of making a draw with white, right? Um, so. No, uh, I just thought that when you look at it with the computer, it feels like an easy draw. But over the board, uh, well, so far it's one wide win, right? Or maybe there has been a, a previous game. It was a game gearing the publisher Probably, or probably, yes. Like. No, but the point as well is that it um, uh, it's an excellent choice, I think, for White, if you are leading in the match. But the problem is that yeah. Nepo was playing Petrov as well, uh, which is yeah. also <laughs> very nice for White. I mean, if you are... Mm -hmm. Uh, in a plus, which uh, Magnus was after um, after game eight. Uh, so I mean, I guess if he would have played some Sicilians in the match, that would have become a clear mm. a clear option to play uh, instead of. But of course, Petrov was just mm. a very nice choice if you are in plus. I don't know. He he, ca he came so so fast to to, to plus three that it was <laughs> like he was plus yeah. one and then yeah. I g g game six uh, plus one and then uh, he was plus four mm -hmm. on game eleven. So we probably we didn't have time to but think about that basically. Also in 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 the in the Grand Chess Tour right now. I mean, well, our focus was uh, Ali Reza, but uh, another French player is actually doing quite. Mm -hmm. uh, well, right. MBL is making well. A comeback is a bit strong. It's an early stage, but he's plus one, right? Yeah, he made. We should maybe just clarify one side. At the time of recording, four rounds have been finished, mm -hmm. and the fifth round is about to begin. He made so three. First three team. rounds were more or less boring draws, and the end uh, yesterday beat uh, Caruana as well. Had some some open Spanish where he was surprised in the opening. Uh, which <laughs> doesn't come as a surprise, I guess, uh, against <laughs> Fabi, uh, especially. And uh, but then, uh, of course, yes, this, it was incredibly sharp. And okay, he still has this uh, this incredible mm. talent in sharp uh, tactical uh, style. We remember, I guess you, you remember uh, Peter probably Jan as well. His match uh, against, uh, I mean, Magnus match against uh, MVL in London, where mm. Magnus was trying to play as sharp as possible against him. And uh, it failed. So he's uh, when he gets to to some complete mess, he's yeah, yeah. 
clearly uh, clearly one of the top t- top players in the world. Yeah? yeah. No. Maybe I just thought that uh, his star has been dwindling a bit. But maybe it's just because Ali Reza is there and all the focus has been on him. Maybe Maxim is just Maxim and he's doing his thing and uh, doing it quite well. It's just because uh, well we started thinking of him as France number two player, which he, he might be. But uh, it doesn't necessarily mean he's become a worse player himself. He's right? number fifteen in the world. I mean, it's good. I mean, it's good up many tournaments mm. recently. I mean, in this Grand Prix series, mm-hmm. he didn't do well oh, it's true. Uh, in um, in World Cup. It's true. Uh, yeah. A year ago, he was a likely challenger. Yeah, so fair enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, after after the second part of candidates, everything went wrong. I mean, he didn't manage to qualify mm-hmm. for the candidates basically. So I mean, mm-hmm. everything went wrong except this title in uh, World Blitz, which was of course uh, nice. As you now, he can claim his. Uh, is a, I mean, in France, he's presented as a as a world champion. Okay, he, he is, is. Mm-hmm. the world he champion. Is. Yeah. All right. Other notes on the tournament. This is Romanian wildcard uh, Diak, which is somehow. I, I mean, every time I see him, I think he's really a good player. So I think he's a bit underrated and um, always very well prepared. And seems to be doing well. Last year it was the same. I think he beat Maxim actually mm-hmm. uh, last year, and now he's already on plus one. Okay, against Rapport he was a bit lucky because uh, he was massively worse, uh, probably lost. But he was fighting very well, and uh, and he took his chance. So very impressive. To be fr- thrown into this field and not collapse is already huge. Yeah, to be on plus one is just uh, amazing for a player of uh, his rating, right? So I mean. No, if sort of on a relative scale, that's actually the most impressive thing in, in this tournament. But of course, well, our focus might be on Wesley. Anyway. Always. Okay, so five rounds or whatever to go there. We'll keep an eye on it. There's also the Sigemann tournament, which both of you or one of you have played in and or won. <laughs> it's still still unclear. Um, where Eric Aisi looked like he yeah. was gonna live up to my prediction and just oh, pressure everybody who won the first two games but then he lost a key game to to hans niemann nice game actually mm-hmm. just putting putting pressure in some end game that started as equal but yeah a lot of uh, t- uh, sort of small tactics and non-obvious decisions to me at least like some the pawn moves g4 f5 h5 Overall, yeah, just a very well played game. I was impressed by Hans Niemann. And since then, Hans Niemann has taken control of the tournament. Once again, at the time of recording, the last round is running where Niemann is one point ahead of the field. So he would need a draw to clinch it. Yeah, he improved uh, incredibly quickly. I remember him. He was playing Blitz online during the lockdown against uh, Naka. And Naka was playing against Hans. Hans is that bad chat. You know, because the chat was saying like, okay, with this guy, uh, hence he was not even a grandmaster. And then he started to play uh, live. And uh, well, as uh, as Peter said in one of the previous episodes, uh, he had no openings at all. I mean, the guy was just uh, playing blitz uh, all day. And you can fix openings. Uh, that was your point of the last uh, mm. time. And it seems that he, he fixed he fixed them. And uh, now he's doing... Every time he's playing, he's winning rating, 26-70 or something. So they seems to be... A <laughs> I mean, he became a, a very strong player in like something like one year or a couple of years. So mm-hmm. that's very weird to me. But So it seems that playing Blitz online is a, with Naka is a very good, very good training. They should call these matches hands and brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Sure. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see if he manages to win that. Yeah. But clearly, he's played a ton of games since chess has restarted. He probably was a much stronger player yeah. than his rating with all the practice. With some of the Indian young guys, I believe you could see as well that they played a lot of li- online. And it's a way to get better at chess. No, maybe not the way that was taught to us when we were young. And Botvinnik, I don't think, thought very highly of uh, playing Blitz online or offline. But it seems to work. There are many ways to get better at chess, no? 
I, I think so. I think generally it's a very interesting discussion. And uh, of course, uh, well, we all know the the Bodwinnik story and advice, and that's what we grew up with. But basically, there is uh, it seems to be empirical evidence uh, to the contrary these days, right? I mean, Magnus Nakamura, Kayakin. Uh, I mean, huge online players. I think uh, Kayakin? many aren't. I think so. No. Well, he used to play a lot of online blitz when he was young. Is my point. Oh, okay. And. Um, okay. I think so, and I think generally, well, the point is that you manage to play an absurd amount of chess, and like that you get a lot of input in a way. Well, you can almost consider it Alpha Zero style, that uh, the sort of amount of chess you've been exposed to really matters. And, uh, well, if you're good enough to have meaningful ge games at a quick uh, sort of uh, time control, it seems to matter a lot. Well, we debated that also about... Uh, the uh, Carlsen Yapomyakshi match that Magnus seems to well ha had a played some online bullet uh, in a couple of days before the match and it seemed to work out well for him. I think we just have to go that it, it seems to work for somebody and um, then uh, these people shouldn't stop it in a way. That Hans uh, Niemann has become so strong, of course, is very impressive. I mean, based on some of his tweets, it seems even to surprise him himself to some extent. But uh, Oh, it's very impressive. Uh, well, yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, we can only tip our hats in, in a way. Yeah, because sure. in the tournament you have... Uh, okay, we, we are talking about uh, Eric Aizy, how, how boy, but there is a lot of uh, very, very experienced uh, It's a very player. strong tournament. I mean, right? Adams, Shiov, uh, Nils, Navar, uh, Jordan, I mean, like, and S Salem. I mean, okay, it's <laughs> just a very strong tournament, and it's basically the... I think maybe it's his first well, cl uh, close tournament like that. I mean, like for for well, Lehman. I, I I choose Van Forest as a as, as my pick as the winner, right? I mean, we're talking about someone who has won Wike and Say, who also I think he was in a plus score in in this uh, year's uh, Wike, uh, beating Geary, for instance, and such. And he's actually on minus one in this tournament. It's a very strong tournament, and that uh, Neiman is leading it by four and a half out of six. It's just very impressive. Using the prep, you jinxed. You jinxed yeah, your... using the prep from, from yeah, the match but, as well. Uh, so, it's uh, amazing. I mean, he's a he's a teammate. You should uh, you should show him some support, right? <laughs> even if you jinx, jinx, jinx him. No, we like Jordan. We are team Jordan. I will also predict the German team doing well in the Olympiad if it helps. It does not help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Mm. What what are the ambition actually? Right. The Bundestrainer. Wait, we we forgot that actually. What what are the ambition of the Bundestrainer? You have to make some speech before the. Before the, the Olympiad, like you get fired if you are not in top 10, uh, you get a bonus if you are in top 3, or how does that work? I, I forgot the bonus negotiations. <laughs> and the serious answer is you, you know how it is. Like Germany, the team will be around number 10. And then, of course, you, you hope things go well. And if things go well in the last round, you'll be in a position to to play for for medals and if things go badly like you won't but usually in olympiads i've seen it many times with the with the french team for example so much depends on the last round and who you get as your opponent and where it goes but you hope to be in that position i would think it's silly the goal is to make top 10 or the goal is a medal or whatever like we've we've been in the position quite a few times and then if it goes well it goes well Peter's yeah. rolling his eyes. Well, he, has a was, strong, he has a strong take. No, that was just uh, not an. Uh, curious well, we I understand, but it's also becomes very defensive if um, there is no sort of. Uh, well, it's it's a pity for a sport if you cannot define any kind of target. Then there is something wrong with uh, it in a way. Oof. I mean, well, you should finally uh, we get well, we, we get the we, talk. We want to yeah. qualify for the world championship the teams, for instance, could be something. So, no, I understand that it's incredibly uh, difficult for uh, let's say a second tier team. To, well, I mean, you're not playing for gold, most likely. So that, I mean, to sort of have things under control uh, and such. But, um, well, no, I, I understand your answer. Yeah, I think it's not serious. Like, of course you can say, we want to win a medal, but you can have the yeah. same rating performance and finish 15th or 3rd. Like, you know how the last two rounds... But, for instance, start, quali so. qualifying for the world teams would be quite something for Germany, in my opinion. That's... Uh, well, that's what impossible. But I understand that uh, it's a very random. You saw Poland, which has maybe, a, I mean, almost similar strength, maybe a bit stronger, was very close to winning uh, maybe the last time and such. Right? We were very close. Like we played the last... I, actually, I, if we would win the last match against Russia, 
we would finish first. I remember. It, wa- it was just gold. And Bramble, we lost actually. two and a half, one and a half, which is no no yeah. shame, but we finished tenth. So this is exactly what... Uh, it's one game. If Bakro beats Nepomiashi, um, mm-hmm. then we are first. But Bakro lost to Nepomiashi. Okay, it's not it's not the mistake of Etienne, of course, but just... Let's <laughs> oh, take an nice example. <laughs> ni- ni- nice backstabbing. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean... Like, why didn't he just crash <laughs> Nepomiashi with Black instead of... Yeah. Getting crushed Who knows? I mean, it can happen. Bigger. No, that Bakro beats Nepomiashi. I, I mean, it's not impossible. Course, sure. uh, and uh, we would just finish first, and uh, we finished uh, tenth, I think, or ninth, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. It's so so close. You yeah. want to be in that position, like as a player with Germany, we were in that position every every now and then. Like I think in Turin, where was it? We played Russia in the last round, and yeah. We lost that match in Dresden. We were very close to the medals mm-hmm. through most of it. In 2011, things went amazing and we won one. And of course, it can also go badly. So you want to yeah. ideally make sure the players are in a position to play good chess and that you you end up there with a chance. But, but other than that, yeah, I just don't think it's serious. But, but of course, you I agree. It, it fin- also finished near the rank story <laughs> is a very good an- example, right? That yeah. you, you're one point away from winning, but when you don't get that point, you, you drop to 10. It's not how a yeah. let's say world championship in football works or something like yeah. that. There is a bigger selection election process, and uh, well, that's the price we pay for having it also as such a great social event that everybody comes there and nobody gets sent home. But of course, from a sporting perspective, it is it is random. So we were just trying to push it to say something we could, uh, well, uh, sort of yeah, play sure. in four months and but, co- call you a failure. But uh, well, we didn't manage that. But nah, you'll find a way. Like, tr- uh, history has <laughs> yeah, shown yeah, yeah. that you'll find a way. Yeah. Um, what else is there? Candidates tiebreak. Speaking of tiebreak systems, yeah, at the at the Olympiad, that's what we were getting at. Th- a lot of things can change. I mean, in in the last round, and because of the tiebreaks, we've had these situations where we didn't know, or I didn't know for quite some hours when the event was I, over who had won it. Right? I, I actually spent several hours uh, giving serious input to to an article. I think I'm, I'm quoted a lot uh, uh, some years back about the problems and sort of the unjustness of the the, the tiebreak system at, at Olympiads and such. I was giving some examples. Uh, I think especially the one where, well, Germany. Were you perhaps involved in in the sense that uh, I, I mean Germany was doing incredibly badly one year, and then some random game by Germany against someone else decided that U.S. and not Ukraine won goal, if I remember and such. And um, hang on, first of all, <laughs> let me um, um, get to the first point: uh, were you maybe involved? Germany was doing incredibly <laughs> badly one year. No, <laughs> wasn't involved. U.S. Germany, not U.S. a player. Uh, ah, okay. okay. Um, yes, but <laughs> no, I mean, also, well, I remember the Olympiad in Dresden that um, I think, I forgot if it was Georgia or Ukraine, was celebrating gold in the female section because they thought they won and so did the, the other team. But when the result came, it turned out to be the opposite uh, and such. It's a, it's a complex system and generally you would like to have a system where it's pretty obvious who's won when the event is over. But I don't think that's asking too much uh, from a spectator point of view and such. So it, it is a very complicated uh, system and I think they are about to change it if they haven't done it. But well, what we talked about is the tiebreak system in the Canada. This is now being changed to a playoff. And uh, well, I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I have suggested it uh, numerous times, but uh, now it's seems to, to, to have uh, happened, so kudos to FIDE, but uh, well, why did it take so long? Wow. So long. Yeah, because it was already pointed uh, out in 2013, uh, uh, already when Magnus, uh, I mean, won, I mean, he won the event, of course, but uh, he was tied for first with Kamnik, I mean, you know, he was there, so the boss No, I, I mean, 2013 is going back to little. I was... Uh, Vichy became world champion in 2007 and uh, I was with him there. Now, in the 13th round, Vichy made a draw against Grishuk, so he was practically world champion. But had he lost to Grishuk, it would be the strange situation that he would be half a point ahead of uh, Gelfand. But the tiebreaks would be if that... um, uh, I think, how was it? If Vichy made a draw and Gelfand won, Gelfand would win. But if Vichy lost and Gelfand made a draw, Vichy would win. 
And that, of course, becomes incredibly random and such. I mean, well, we basically need a system that's very easy to understand. But uh, having a playoff is just by far the easiest. You avoid this kind of situation where there becomes some weird tactical things. I remember also in 2013, you mentioned I was um, Magnus's coach. And, uh, well, I was following some statistical models on uh, how the results would, would uh, be. And it was clear, for instance, that Magnus had to play Aronian at some point. Uh, and Aronian was trailing Magnus by one point. But if Aronian won, he would catch up with Magnus, but also have the better tie break. So that would improve his chances dramatically. But Magnus making a draw would keep him at a uh, better tie break and a plus one lead. So for Magnus, it was huge incentive to, to uh, make a draw with White. Uh, well, obviously, I, I couldn't get him to, to, to do that uh, by force, but he managed anyway. But it's just that there is some oddities within the system when you don't have a normal uh, tie break. Here, it's just a playoff and everything becomes straightforward. So that's, that's just uh, great. Yeah, I don't think there's any debate no. there. Everybody prepares prefers it. Everybody's been saying so for years. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, when it's yeah, around it's Robin, of course, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, some open tournament, you, you, of course. Open tournament is a different yeah, match. Different, but but uh, here it's clear yeah. that you play, oh, so you play the so same much. guys. So, I mean, like, it doesn't make sense. If you make the same number of points, then you should, should play some. Uh, but there is, yeah. but actually, if we think that spot number two could be very important, is there a tie break for second? Ah. <laughs> or do you want to win the tiebreak for first? Okay, depends. Sure, no, but tiebreak for second is actually a serious question. That could be very rele um, relevant. Oof, oof. I don't you think should tweet. there, there you is should tweet. one. Uh, yeah, yeah. It is. There's, there's a tweet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I read the rules. It sounded like it's a tiebreak mm -hmm. for first. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if multiple players are tied for first. Mm -hmm. But yeah, good point. So now it's a... Or I'm not sure if it's a good point. Thanks. If Fides should adjust depending on Magnus's plans, you can't really have a tie break for for a second. But it's an interesting. No, point. but uh, who is officially first reserve is uh, kind of relevant. Yeah. I mean, one thing is Magnus, but uh, well, you know, yeah. historically you're gonna need it at some point. I mean, someone could have an accident or something like that, right? But where does it end? You want a tie break for third as well? If there are two accidents, uh, it's an interesting point. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure that I think Larsen and Geller had a tie. Uh, Playoff match for third in the candidates uh, for some reason um, many years back and such. So I don't know, but um, well, I don't know. Just to, well, it's better that the rules has clarified who has the exact order rather than um, well, it, we're gonna end up in a in a weird situation later. But you, but, uh, we didn't anyway. make any transition, but we are already in the category. What's wrong with Fide this week, Peter? Ah. No, we're already there, no? You are just already criticizing well, the, uh, <laughs> the new regulation. <laughs> but I, I don't think I'm criticizing. I'm, I, I, to be honest, I haven't read them, so I'm asking questions if they are taking uh, care of that. But uh, well, we can go to that category if you if you want. Uh, we always want. Yeah. To. <laughs> okay, so it's me to move. Yeah, for yes. sure. For Alpha now, no, we just go take a yeah, coffee. No, well, okay, I will try to limit myself to rather few. Uh, questions but i think this uh, russian chess site chess news pointed out that uh, well basically fida has cut ties with all russian uh, sponsors but they kept the sponsor uh, called alrud lawyers who is a russian uh, law firm but um, well i think some someone found on their website that they are actually well, it seems to have quite some expertise in uh, sanctions, or rather, as I think they frame it, uh, Russian counter sanctions and how to deal with unfriendly countries. But unfriendly countries are those who put sanctions on on uh, Russia. But uh, well, I think I hope that most of the world doesn't see them as unfriendly countries. I think we think unfriendly country is Russia, who is uh, attacking uh, a neighbor. But that um, well. Well, FIDE is prouding themselves of us cutting ties to, let's say, Russia and the, the Kremlin rhetorics. But this Alrut is, uh, well, clearly someone who has considerable expertise in trying to, let's say, avoid sanctions and also is using the, the typical um, Russian sort of uh, lingo in terms of uh, unfriendly countries and the unjust war, unjust sanctions and such. And, uh, well, I don't think it's a fitting uh, sponsor for, 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 for FIDE to have uh, at all. Also, it's not a fitting advisor to have. It would be reasonable to ask if are they actually the one giving advice on uh, which how we should deal with sanctions uh, and such and set it up in the chess world because they are obviously very uh, pro-Russian in, the, in their rhetorics. Well, they are Russia-based. 
So I can see none of you seem to want to add anything to, to my speech. I don't have much to add. You know my general sentiment about the war in Russia. I don't know much about that case. And I also never know how close the ties are mm -hmm. if it's someone, yeah. That didn't update a website or if there is on the contrary they they, well, they, going on there? they they have expertise in from going long back sanctions russia is not new but they made an updated version based on the the new sanctions uh, sort of thing no i meant the feeder website, oh, the FIDA website no, sure. like, this is they have removed a lot of russian sponsors from the sponsor list but uh, said that those who doesn't have specific ties to russian state money they will keep but uh, well, I'm, I'm actually i, I must i must admit i stopped uh, following uh, fide news uh, since we are doing this podcast, because I know <laughs> how to <we> get <laughs> my update every week, and it's enough for me, you know. Like <laughs> I don't need ten tweets a day <laughs> to feel better. Fair enough. So um, yeah, so I'm happy to to listen, and mm -hmm. yeah, I think you have. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I should say that publicly, but uh, I tend to agree with you, and this is very very dangerous talk. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but the next one you will probably not agree with me with, with then. But this is about uh, Nepomniachtchi. He is playing with a Norilsk Nickel uh, sort of sponsor shirt in uh, in the Grand Chess Tour. And uh, well, Norilsk Nickel was also a form of feeder sponsor, but those they removed. I think based on them being, let's say, well, too Russian or, or sort of uh, half state company it's, or something it's, like by, that. By the way, it's a very hard uh, sponsor, chess sponsor because it used to be a team in your open club cup like 20 years ago Nickel, sure. uh, like it was mm -hmm. uh, it was called yeah, like that uh, so it's humongously uh, rich uh, company and such but i mean well it also well uh Nepom Yachi has signed an anti-war statement and we think it's fine that he uh, keeps competing or at least uh, some thinks it's fine that's the majority and the current rules but can you then sort of um Advertise Russian sponsors is a reasonable question. Well, he used to be sponsored by Simaland, who is obviously extremely pro-Putin. This he doesn't seem to do anymore. He doesn't advertise it at least. But well, it puts some kind of uh, dilemmas and such. Well, if Fide cannot have Norilsk Nickel as a sponsor, can Nepom have it playing a Fide tournament? That's a relevant question, I think. It's not a Fide. I mean, like it's a Fide rated. You mean? No, but we are. It's Fide rated, and uh, well, also soon Grand Chess Tour is going to be a, a qualifier. Yeah, but such. that's for later. So you can't say it's a FIDE tournament. I mean, it's a FIDE well, tournament, but that's of course. it. So what's your criticism, Peter, that Nepomneshi is having the sponsor or that he's allowed to play? I would generally say both. I mean, if FIDE thinks that we cannot have... Um, I mean, the FIDE cannot have sponsors like Norris Nickel because they are too closely uh, tied to the Russian state and the uh, economy. Well, we have a player who is anti-war and we allow him to play because he's anti-war. But he's still sponsored by something that we find is unacceptable for FIDE because it's helping uh, Russia as a state. So, I mean, there is some uh, dilemma there. We have to figure out how to deal with these things. Maybe Norris Nickel is not crossing a line, but we have to have some kind of line. I mean, well, if it was Simaland, I guess we would find it very uncomfortable, for instance, and such. So, hey, I mean, I'm just saying that, well, the dilemmas pops up and we will have to deal with it. I mean, Nepomniachtchi is playing the candidates soon. I mean, can he actually ad advertise uh, Russian uh, state companies on the sort of world scene like that? Yeah, I don't. I don't have a clear neither do I thought uh, answer on these on these topics. And always, I I don't like the focus, but maybe that's wrong because to my mind, all the focus should be on mm -hmm. helping Ukraine. For me personally, Nepomneshi with the statement. I'm sure none of these guys were asking or for or expecting the war to start and then there are a lot of decisions to make which probably aren't very enviable either not just in terms of sponsorship but in terms of statements where you want to live what you want to mm -hmm. do with your life and so on i'm sure those are all very tough questions but they're so diminished to what anybody in yeah. ukraine or any ukrainian chess player is going through so i think yeah i can sort of see where you're coming from mm -hmm. but i I understand it must be very tricky for Nepomnish. He was busy playing a world championship match, certainly not with Russian politics, I would mm -hmm. assume. But it feels like, yeah, it's a strange focus for, for me to have because you end up 
empathizing with the Russian players where I very much believe they didn't ask for this and they're in a tough spot which then again feels wrong for me because the place you really want to empathize with is well, Ukraine. So it's it's strange from in my head. I, I think today on. I saw a tweet by Volokitin who was sort of talking about the consequences for the Ukrainian players, right? And I forgot... Uh, well, I think he mentioned that one of uh, the players had lost uh, simply a couple of uh, apartments in his, his home city because of the uh, disruptions and such. I mean, the Ukrainians are facing, of course, uh, horrible, horrible consequences, and it's not a given that uh, more is not, not, not to come. And uh, No, I agree. It would be great to have more focus on, on the Ukrainian players, but they, to some extent, seem to have difficulties breaking through the the noise in a way they're probably ho uh, very likely busy with other things now like Gate Poduso is telling us that it's Korbov and Moiseyenko which is mm -hmm. um, well okay yeah that's a yeah in general okay it's a bit off topic but if you if you think about this you work or you play chess or whatever all your life and then you buy an apartment or a house mm -hmm. I mean you build this middle class existence that we also mm -hmm. all more or less built, I would guess, and that just disappears overnight. Yeah, it's, it's just so, uh, so unfathomable. It's like, uh, uh, absurd. Uh, I mean, so it's, uh, yeah, also. it's horrible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so let's, let's move all on. All right. Sorry, I don't have a... Yeah. I don't have a good take. It's so weird for mm -hmm. me to, to even think about it because you end up feeling empathy for Nepomneshi in my case about all oh, these things must be difficult but then you think yeah ugh, this is i don't know no it's, it's not where my head should be going so it's strange don't have a good answer sorry peter but i can understand where you're coming from mm -hmm. fair enough well also to update you on the fide elections there's basically no updates if you want to have a, a quick update there uh, la last week we had a, a new candidate and such but generally no fide has uh, well made public call sort of uh, according to rules that uh, well, for candidates for you know president uh, and and uh, vice presidents and the different uh, commissions and such has to come forward and fulfill the the the, the formal criteria and such. Uh, and I think seventh of June is the the last time yes, uh, if you want to run for for feed the presidency, okay. uh, as far as I understand. So, and I so saw time. as yeah, yeah, well that Kayakin just uh, lost the appeal, so he can still go to true. to Lausanne, yeah, and uh, front of. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he will manage in time. Also, I don't know which kind of deadline. If he, if he wins uh, an appeal two hours before, is it just thrown in? Or how does it work? I don't know. Um, but, well, I think it's generally been clear uh, all the way that if he has to get back into the tournament, it has to be via CAS. Um, yeah. Also, to make sure, I, I really don't hope he will. But CAS is probably the place where he has the best yeah, chances, I would sure. guess. That's uh, what in, I was way, thinking, right? yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's there you just have to... But it's very, it's very fast, no? I don't know. I, I think so. I once had a beef with the European Chess Union uh, of tie breaks uh, long ago, <laughs> and I appealed it to the ECU, but appealing to CAS was extremely costly, yeah. and probably I'm even more cheap than I am principled, so I actually decided not but to... But I think it's 30... You, you, you have to make a deposit of 30,000, which they give you back if you win the case. But... Yeah. Yeah, I, again, as I said, that was slightly over my budget for proving a point <laughs> about tie breaks. <laughs> but uh, I mean, Ask a friend. yeah, uh, Kayakin, of course, will 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 do it, and such, and will be yeah, interesting. Sure. I mean, no, I remember I saw some Norwegians debating the case from a juridical point of view. They said that it's not that uh, clear cut a uh, juridical case. It's clear that uh, none of us would like to see Kayakin in the candidates uh, based on his statements, but from a juridical point of view, maybe... No, no, you can so. always defend the freedom of speech. Of, of speech. Mm -hmm. Where does it... It's always a tricky, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. tricky question. So, uh, I don't know. I don't care. If he makes it in, um, yeah, congratulations. Uh, I'm sure he'll see. How beloved he is in the chess world yeah. after all the things he's yeah, done. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, let's hope not. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Where? What do we have next? Can Peter Heine say anything about good about Fide is on my list? But there's been plenty of. Peter yeah, praising, I think that was uh, a, 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 a question from one of the, the listeners who, yeah. who was trying to to bait me there. But I surely can. Uh, well, for instance. It's 
during the World Championship match in Dubai, I really would like to praise uh, David Viada for he made um, sure that in Denmark there is a guy who is both, I think, blind and deaf and can't talk. And uh, I mean, well, obviously that is, uh, to put it mild, uh, a number of uh, challenges he faces and such. And he's a huge chess fan. So they managed to, to help with his Danish caretakers to bring him to Dubai where he could uh, follow the match. And he's a huge fan of Magnus. And when the match has finished, there was even a session where he, he met Magnus afterwards. And uh, well, the way they communicate is that um, uh, Magnus says something to his interpreter, who is then by sort of uh, some kind of sign language where he touches him on his uh, arm and hand, they manage to communicate a bit and such. And that, uh, well, that Fide put up that was just uh, great, especially by, by Yada. And uh, no, I'm sure that this was an incredible highlight for this guy who is uh, so challenged and such. So that uh, they get my very much uh, praise for, for doing such that I have. A lot of human it's respect. Very nice story, but it's mainly it's also praises mainly Magnus because if Magnus wouldn't uh, agree to meet the guy, that would be that would have been a different. I story. think I think Magnus was asked two minutes before in a ah, way, so they okay. put everything up and hope for the best in that sense. Okay. Uh, but well, if I have praised Magnus by accident, well, okay, I mean, yeah, it's part of my job as well. Right? Yeah, but, but only uh, praise Fide. Maybe wait, what? do you have another story where you only praise Fide? I mean, it's hundred percent Fide. Okay. <laughs> okay, now you're putting pressure. To, I, I've actually been thinking about this one for a while. <laughs> well, Fide does a lot, a lot of good things. Isn't that the premise as being a politician? That, uh, well, you're supposed to, to run the, the shop and then you get criticism for things that are not done properly in, in a way. I mean, I think the, well, I can say that the rating system is functioning. There's a lot of things that are actually functioning and such. Um, so, I mean, it becomes a bit... So, uh, rating system, yeah? Well, no, I don't know. Um, um, well... <laughs> I mean, I came up with one example. Now you ask me for, to come with five. Good five. Job. Let's, <laughs> let's stick to one per week. I think week. so, yeah. Um, we should get to our beloved categories, but we already talked so much. We have to do them quickly. Tales from the training camps. Do we have to do them it's, quickly? It's yours, sure it's yours, Jan. Yeah, time yeah it's, it's yours, yeah. Tales from the training yeah. camps, that's my favorite. But today, maybe let's let's not have... Laurent food co content. Oh. Just just a small break. There's still the saucy saucer is still there. That didn't. Uh, don't you worry. But I think the tale that the world needs to know is the famous hammer Sam Shanklin prank, which happened. This was a training camp, I think, in 2016. Yeah, before the kayaking I, world exactly. championship. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, remember, we looked at some numerous lines of the Spanish there and such, right? So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, other openings too. But, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> but that's true. Yeah, we were. But I thought it was you and Sam who was very involved in this uh, from an intellectual point of view. But uh. absolutely, a lot of brain power went went into it. So we were in Kragerø in Norway, Ron's favorite <laughs> place with the healthy food, and yeah, Hammer. This was before before my time. Used to be a team member, but he wasn't. He wasn't involved with the team. No, anymore. Hammer de departed from the team, which probably also created a bit of sort of the the, the idea to, to tease him a bit. I think he decided to be a commentator instead of a second for that match. Uh, and then we thought entitled to make a bit fun of him. Anyway, go on with your story. Yeah, I don't remember the details. I'm going to need Laurent to fill them in. But basically, the idea was to offer Hammer a gig in the... TV program, yeah. What did we call it? Last, last big standing, <laughs> standing, I think. Yeah. Which, which was yeah. loosely, loosely based on Beauty and the Nerd, which is an actual program. <laughs> so we created, I think, a fake email address from some casting agency and started pitching, pitching Hammer on the idea. At first, he wasn't too interested, but then. No, he, but you were you well, were doing the negotiations with him, and uh, I think at some point, Hammer wanted to start uh, debating the finances. No, no, not uh, at all, not at all. No, 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 no. Oh. That's, that's not how it worked. Uh, Hammer said, "Like I have no time for the meeting," and then the next email was, "It's a pity because there's uh, 
250k to the winner. <laughs> so, so that's really a pity. And then Hammer answered like, okay, I'm available for next week. <laughs> Basically, any time for, for a call, yeah? So that was really funny that when we... I mean, when, when you guys mentioned the, the pies found... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I said uh, I said there wasn't much of a daily fee, just a per diem of <laughs> seven hundred fifty per day, but that the that the real price was of course the two hundred fifty k for for the, for the winner. And yeah, it was fun. Like we we wrote a bunch of nonsense. I think Sam was really the driving force. I recall I was very proud of myself that we wrote that Bruce Pandolfini, yeah. whom I don't know, but it sounded like a good name to use, had recommended him for the show. Um so yeah it w- there was a lot of a lot of back and forth about the the last the last geek standing show and then we in the end we got a a casting call with Hammer on Skype where he was supposed to to talk to the to the agency the casting agency but it it was Sam Shankland yeah. all but along. he took it very well let's praise Hammer here yeah, 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 yeah. He, but, he, he thought it was incredibly funny but he got incredibly lucky because uh Hammer had done his PR, so well Hammer likes PR. Well, don't we all? But Hammer has sort of uh, managed to ensure that there would be a newspaper article coming out that Hammer was being casted for this uh, excellent show, and he, oh, yeah, yeah, he, he, he had given them right, all the details, case. and it would be pressed the day after. <laughs> but we, t- we we missed time the call, we so, so exactly. Day. So uh. he he was just in time to manage to call them in, in panic and say no no please don't pre- uh, publish this one else uh, yeah we would have gotten it all the way that well maybe it wouldn't have been very sympathetic from our part but um, no so that uh, no but it was a beautiful sell and process uh, and such and uh, i don't know why we have time for this at the uh, camps or why we think it's ethically correct <laughs> but i guess it's uh, <laughs> well, you have plenty it's, uh, i mean Kagyo, you, know? <laughs> you have nothing to do so you, you must uh, fill no, in no. the days yeah? <laughs> yeah i mean football yeah, yeah. golf is funny but uh, <laughs> Yeah, you, can't play. you wonder why the preparation is as the level it is. That's, uh, <laughs> that, that, that's what. No, but to, to be way. fair, the computers need to have some time to you know yeah. calculate lines uh, and such. So we have to do something in between. But uh, sure. yeah. no, but I mean, I still think I have some of the emails you sent. They're actually very beautifully written. I have to admit, I was then I was very impressed by you. Well, I still am, but uh, this was uh, especially. Yeah, attention to detail was paid. No, I remember no. at some point Sam got upset at me because I wrote dollar two hundred fifty thousand and I put the dollar sign in front of the yeah. the number, which was a European thing uh-huh. to do, or the other way around. I can't quite recall, but yeah, like uh, I'm, although, some some attention I'm to detail. Pretty sure you also managed to Google uh, the name of some actual uh, person that you were sort of imitating that you were writing. Uh, no, 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 that w- that would be wrong. Ah, um, really? Okay. I don't think that happened. Okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Oh, it might be illegal, actually. Might be illegal. We'll get into troubles with your, with your <laughs> yeah, tales yeah. from the train camps. Yeah, <laughs> you did many illegal. But things. we are still friend, yeah. f- still friendly with the hammer. Uh, so that's that's good. Yeah, for I sure. am at least. Um, I don't know. I hope next tale we don't get into trouble for not declaring saucisson <laughs> at the Norwegian border. Um, yeah. <laughs> Then, last and least category, chickens of the week. I'm not sure if you have any chicken. For me, as I think of this category as praise, it has to be Wesley. Three out of four, executing chicken chess beautifully. Free roll against Nepomnishi. He's a true role model to all of us. Congrats to Yeah, Wesley. I wanted actually to make... Uh, I didn't have any chicken, even if Anish is a chicken by default, you know, if there is no chicken, it's Anish, yeah, who, who gets it. But, sure. but the prediction, the prediction yeah, is that Wesley no, no, will be chickening out uh, big time uh, in the next uh, few rounds. So is <laughs> is uh, he's, um, he's my prediction for for the upcoming week. I don't have better n- better offer than that. Okay. Well. Okay. Uh, it seems like it's me who is on Geary duty, so I will nominate Geary. Why is he not playing the Grand Chess Tour? I mean, has he actually turned it down? Or? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, well, it's an can't... obvious challenge. For he's in the top ten in the world. I mean, he must have been invited. I mean, he should uh, take such challenges if he wants is to Is that completely sure? Actually. Because it takes the result from the previous years. And they have some wild cards as well. Maybe he's not playing that particular tournament as well. So maybe he's in the cycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Uh, oh, it's a white card. He is playing Norway Chess, no? I'm yeah, sure Norway Chess, really Champion Chess Tour. I understand. Norway Chess is, is one tournament, but Chess Tour, Grand Chess Tour is, is quite... But well, if he's actually... If he missed the qualification, then I have done him injustice. Then, the then the uh, why Magnus is not playing as well? The Grand Chess yeah. Tour? I think it's uh, slightly different in, in a way, but um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you guys will nominate Anish as a chicken if he's playing, <laughs> if there are any draws, or if he's not playing for chickening out from playing. Of course. Right? Yes. Okay, just <laughs> just to get the the method. Um, yeah. Is this it? I would think so. I would think so. Also, nothing. Nothing particular to 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 add. Um, well, no. Goodbye. Been a great pleasure. See you next week. Check out my appearance where I shamelessly plug the Chicken Chess Club podcast on the Perpetual Chess podcast as well by my friend Ben Johnson. And every day, Yanis Tan on Twitch. Every day. Every day. Every night. Yanis I have the, the notification coming in. Sometimes I'm I'm watching this. Uh, how, what, what, what's the name again? Uh, it's much appreciated. You find time from your busy <laughs> bonus watching schedule to sometimes check in with me. Okay. <laughs> of course, if you want to have regular updates on Feeder, then follow me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> PH Chess? What do you call it? I think I'm called PH Chess. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll be easy to find. All right. Thanks for listening. See you guys next week. Bye.